I want us to take a look at some of the microcontrollers currently on the market and see what is going on inside. Okay, go to your browser. I use Google, but feel free to use whatever. And let's search for SEM32G0B1RE datasheet right there. Click on the data sheet and yeah, there we go. Go ahead and download the data sheet. We also need something we call reference manual. By the way, in programming a microcontroller, the bare metal way, the few things that you really need to embrace and learn to read are the data sheet and reference manual. They contain everything that you need to know about the address of peripherals, the address of registers, and how you can interact with specific registers. Let's search for STM32G0B1. This time we want the reference manual. Okay, so right here, download it. That is the reference manual. Okay, once you are done, I already have it. We will look at something. I will start with the data sheet. Okay, this is our data sheet. I want you to search for block diagram. Block diagram. Yes. Now, this is the block diagram of the specific microcontroller that we are dealing with. It contains STM MCU. From the block diagram, you can see peripherals everywhere, okay? But I promise you, it is not confusing at all. At the center of this microcontroller unit is the clock source, that is the RCC. Now, when we go here, you can see GPIO, general purpose input and output. Inside the GPIO, we have specific ports, port A, port B, port C, up to port F. Now, each port has a certain number of pins. So now when we go back to this microcontroller, you can see it has pins, right? So probably this might be 16, 16, 16, 16, let's say 64 pins. It could be that all the pins here belong to one port, port A. It could be all these pins belong to port B, port C. But don't forget the same peripheral and the peripheral is GPIO. So GPIO, it has instances. It has port A, port B, port C port D, port E, port F, and they are all GPIO. They are all pins that you can use for different purposes. I want you to come back to the center, that is the RCC. You can see some lines that are connecting peripherals to this central clock, okay? Look, look at this line here, like a pipe, and they've written AHB. Now, all the pipes that you see here, we call them bus, okay? So this is a bus. And this bus is written APB. This is another bus. It's also APB. Let's see. This is another bus. It's AHB. You can see there is one bus here that goes and connects to bus matrix. So this is also a bus. On the left side, this is DAC. DAC is also a peripheral digital analog converter. It means that if you have a digital signal, let's say a high or low, and you want to convert it to analog. So analog signal, it means that it fluctuates. So the analog signal that will be generated will fluctuate between zero and five volts. ADC is another peripheral analog digital converter. So the DAC AC and the ADC, they work in the opposite way. Now the ADC, we use that to measure analog signals and convert them to digital. Let's say that you want to measure voltage. Okay, you have specific voltage and you want to use the microcontroller to read it. Then you have to connect that voltage source to the ADC of the microcontroller and this peripheral will convert it from analog to digital. Now beneath it, we have SPI, SPI2, SPI3. Okay, so the same peripheral, different instances. SPI is also another peripheral that is used for communication. Earlier on, I said that some of the pins of the microcontroller unit are used to communicate with sensors. Different sensors also use different forms of communication protocols. So SPI is one of the communication protocol. UART is also one of the communication protocols. Now, when you come here, you can see we have USB. I'm sure that you are familiar with USB, the USB that you use in charging your phone and other stuff. Yes, actually USB is a peripheral inside the microcontroller. If you have a PC in your home and there are USB ports, it means that the USB port is being connected to the microprocessor in your PC. So it is a peripheral inside there. The port that you see is just an extension to enable you to connect whatever you have to the peripheral, all right? Now on the right, you can see we have USART, which is also UART, all right? Now besides these, we have the 
the timer peripheral let's say that you are doing something and you need to time stuff we have the power control we have some watchdogs okay an event happens and you want to trigger something different peripherals inside the microcontrollers are used for different activities enough of the data sheet close it and let us take a look at the reference manual let's see what we got you downloaded it so go ahead and open it inside this reference manual i want you to search for memory map you scroll down a little bit this is what we are looking for this is the memory map of the mcu dev kit that i'm using in a glimpse you can see this memory map presents the address of all the peripherals and the components inside a microcontroller unit now as i presented in the first page right here every peripheral inside the microcontroller has specific address right so now this microcontroller this is how it looks like the flash memory occupies this address you can see main flash memory system memory and ram there is a part of the memory that is painted gray it is reserved you can use that part so we have flash memory this part reserved here we have system memory when you look at the left ram peripherals okay all the uart all the spi all the i square c all the timers they are part of the peripheral on the right the peripheral is extended into buses now when we opened the data sheet you could see that all the peripherals were connected to specific bus right i hope you've not forgotten take a look again this is the block diagram you can see all the peripherals are connected to a specific bus and the bus connects to the rcc this point is where the ahb bus is connected to the apb bus right for now don't worry about the name of the acronym just know that ahb apb they are buses so they are channels through which the peripherals are connected to a clock source every peripheral requires the clock source to run accordingly all right now pull the data sheet aside and let's look at the reference manual the apb bus it starts at this address 0x4000000 ah, that was difficult to say and it ends at this address 0x4000 a7ff now if you are wondering why we still write address in hex and not in decimal copy this address and let's convert it go to your browser and type hex to decimal paste this make sure there is no space right convert is it easier to say 1 billion 73 million 784 thousand eight hundred and thirty one or it's easier to just say zero x four zero 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 a seven ff enough of that now go back to your memory map there's a second apb bus that starts from this address and ends here now there's a gray area which means it's reserved mostly this bus it starts from here and ends here the io posts are from here and ends here now these bars are important the reason is that every peripheral is connected to a bus the gpio is connected to the io port which means that if we want to get to a particular gpio peripheral we can find that within the io port address range in the same way the other peripherals like the spi3 is connected to the apb therefore if we want to find the address of the spi we need to look at the range of the apb bus to prove that let us scroll down if you look at this table sram which means that it's a special type of ram it has a starting address here now this is the flash memory and the starting address of the flash memory is this just as we saw in the memory map all right look flash memory starts here let's find some of our known peripherals like the gpio on the bus side we look for io port right the boundary address 0x5000000 to this is occupied by this peripheral gpioa the next range of memory which has a size of one kilobyte is occupied by gpioB and gpio c d up to f flash is connected to the ahb bus and the address range of the flash is 0x4002 2000 up to this and is one kilobyte in size enough of the stm32 mcu let us take a look at other mcu one of the popular mcus is the atmega right because of the arduino platform let us search for atmega 2560 data sheet download the data sheet open it here 
on the first page it gives you some characteristics of the mcu that you are going to deal with there's jta we are interested in something that has to do with memory so let's search memory map this is address map with external memory what about block diagram this is the inside of the atmega 2560 microcontroller unit mostly called the adreno atmega all right so at the center is cpu now right here we have flash we have ram here different types of ram let's see what we got we have a bunch of peripherals we have the spi twi is here we have the aep rom now on this side you can see port a port g port c and definitely these are the gpio ports on this side we have the usart 3 usart 1 usart 0 commercially available microcontroller units they come with multiple instances of the same peripheral okay so the usart peripheral has few instances like we have usart 3 usart 1 usart 0 the gpio likewise and the others too let us check on the registers and see so here the avr cpu general purpose working registers the registers are laid out here so register 0 up to 31 each register has a definite purpose open the reference manual again i want you to say a gpio register every instance of a gpio so whether it's gpio port a gpio port b each instance has mode register it has the output output speed the pull up pull down register the input data register output data register now one of the things that make embedded system very interesting especially doing bare metal programming is some of the registers their names are very self-explanatory okay this is what i mean look at all the registers here literally they are telling you what they do which means that if you want to communicate with a particular gpio peripheral and you want to read the input from that peripheral then clearly you are going to deal with the input data register in the same way if you want to output something or write something to the register, then you can see right here, output data register. Now click on the mode register and the first register of the GPIO peripheral. You can see right here, it has written GPIO X mode R. The X just means that the peripheral has multiple instances. We have GPIO A, GPIO B, GPIO C. Okay, so if you are dealing with GPIO A, then this register will be GPIO A mode R. If you are dealing with GPIO C, then the mode register of that instance of the GPIO peripheral, that is C, is going to be GPIO C mode R. The microcontroller we are dealing with right now is a 32-bit architecture, which means that the registers are 32 bits long, starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 31. It allows you to define how you want to use a particular GPIO pin. In case you want to use a particular GPIO pin as input, then you need to set the part that corresponds to that pin to 00. zero. Now, how do you know? Take a careful look. We have mode 0, mode 1, up to mode 15. Now, each mode has two bits under it. What it means is that in regards to this microcontroller unit, that is the SCM32 G0B1, inside this microcontroller unit, each GPIO peripheral has 16 pins. So from mode 0 to mode 15. All right. Now, if I want to connect an LED to this particular pin, pin 0, what I need to do is that I look at the mode that corresponds to pin 0. If I want that pin to put on or off an LED, it means that pin is going to act as output pin. I need to write this to bit 0 and bit 1. So I come here. This is general purpose output mode. The pin is going to act as output. Why? Because it will send vote to the LED. Bit 0 here to 1 and bit 1 here, I need to set it to 0. What if I want to connect the LED to, let's say, pin 7? Okay, easy. Pin 7 corresponds to mode 7. This is mode 7. What are the bits under mode 7? 14 and 15 right here. It means that I need to set pin 7 as output mode. So what do I do? The first bit is bit 14. I set it to 1. The next bit I set it to 0. That is bit 15. In the same way, if I want to connect a button to the microcontroller unit and when I press the button, I want the microcontroller to do something, I need to set that pin as input pin. So that when I press the button, let's say that the state will be high and when I leave it, it will be low. If I want to connect the button to pin 8, 
then pin 8 corresponds to mode 8 right then i need to set this mode as what as input so i'll set bit 16 to 0 and bit 17 to 0 when we scroll down we can see the other registers that we have the data register you can see is read only if i want to read a value from let's say pin 11 it means that I come to pin 11 right here and read whatever value is there. This is the output data register and the output data register you can write or read. These bits corresponds to the number of pins. Now from 16 to 31 they are reserved. This is a general overview. In the next video we are going to implement writing and reading from specific registers.